Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, finally. Yeah. All right, here we go. Had a little technical difficulties, but I think we're good to go now. Uh, I'm just going to check it really quick. Yeah, yeah should we should be good. <laughs> all right. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> thank God for all of you here this morning. Uh, thank God for <clears throat> those who are watching by way of Internet. Uh, we really do appreciate all of you. Uh, again, j just want to thank God for uh, everybody, for me, myself, my dad, and my family, uh, for the prayers about my grandfather. Uh, I really appreciate that. I'm still uh, dealing with some things that we, that uh, some business things that I have to continue to do. Uh, and so, but I thank God for all of you uh, and your prayers and your thoughts. Uh, thank God for Dennis and Susan. We have them back. Uh, and so we thank God for them. Uh, also, uh, just wanted to just uh, thank God for uh, those people who are involved in the ministry. Uh, uh, and our online ministry, uh, which we count as our actual local body as well. Uh, now, I will say for those people who have sent me questions, okay, uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, I would ask that you resend those questions so I don't have to, because I've gotten so many emails, texts, calls. Just go ahead and resend it to me. Uh, I know some people think that, well, I don't want to resend it, and you know. Just go ahead and resend it, your question, and that way I'll pick it up, I'll get it. Uh, that way it'll be fresh now, so I don't have to go digging back through a bunch of texts and emails and all of that. So for those people who had questions, uh, do me a favor and go ahead and either email or text me your question again, and then I'll get to it, okay? Uh, yes. I want to thank you for all your prayers for me and my wife. D thank you. Yeah, that's and that's Dennis. So and the cards. And the cards. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you so much for those who sent cards, not only to uh, Dennis and Susan, but also to myself and my family. So again, we thank God for all of you uh, that did those things. And it's it's always good to come together uh, as one, uh, even uh, with things such as such as you know what we we're going through with dad's surgeries and those things. It's always good for the saints to come together one with another. So again, we thank God for for all of you for that. So uh, I would ask if you, if you had any questions, please go ahead and resend those emails and texts, and then that way they'll be fresh on my list, and then I'll get to those, okay, uh, sometime this week. Also, uh, just to point out a couple things, we have our Founders Day uh, coming up on July 21st, okay? It'll be our first, uh, 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 first I guess, recognition of us having been in service or having been a church, and it will be six years, okay? It doesn't seem like that long, but it's been six years. And so we'll have a Founders Day on July 21st here, and then we'll have uh, a uh, Founders Day picnic sort of thing, I guess is what we're calling it, uh, on July 20th, okay? And so we'll have that. Uh, so that way for the people that are coming from out of town, uh, we'll have something for them to do on that Saturday. Uh, so we can play some games, have fun. Uh, then we'll be doing the Jeopardy game uh, on that Saturday, uh, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be doing it online that Saturday. Uh, so you gotta, you're going to have to get here for those who want to play on that Saturday. Uh, but we will be doing it in the future again online. That was a big success. People uh, really tuned in to join that. So we will be doing it online again. Uh, but for the Founders Day, I think we'll just do it here for those who are here locally. Uh, and Outside of that, I think that's it as far as the announcements are concerned. I will be going back to my grandfather's church to speak. Uh, they asked me back there on July 15th. Okay, so I'll be going back there to speak, which is next week, actually. Yeah. No. No, two weeks. Two weeks. Okay, yeah, two weeks. Uh, two weeks. So I'll, I'll be going back down there uh, in another two weeks. And so uh, that's a blessing. So uh, I got the opportunity to... to uh, preach this to be my third time actually now uh, so so that, that's good and they also want me to do like a Bible study with them so I may have to wait and take some time off and do like a weekly Bible study with them uh, are we so, grace in them? yeah oh, uh, absolutely that's what I'm, I'm not doing. compromising the gospel that's what I'm saying <laughs> for anybody so yeah, 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 yeah. You're switching them over. Right, right, right. <laughs> so right, you yeah. take your time. Right, right. You might have so. to go down there a couple of Sundays. <laughs> so, uh, so, but that'll be good. So, again, I thank God for the opportunity uh, to speak forth the mystery of Christ. 
Uh, and so to make and to make all men see what is the fellowship of this mystery. So I thank God for that. Go ahead and turn with me to First Corinthians chapter number nine. I know you mentioned one time you might take a day of the week and start having a Bible study. Right, 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 right. I need to do that. Thank you for that reminder. Mm -hmm. I know how hard it's been, it's been, been so been Bible study all the time. Anyway. Right, right, right. But I wanted to do like a, a, a starting with the basics. And so I, I think I'm going to do that, huh? Is that what you consider a learner's class first? Yes, yes. Are you going to start from Genesis? Yeah, I'm going to start from the very beginning. Oh, that. Yeah, start from the very beginning. Not that I'm going to actually go verse by verse through the <laughs> book of Genesis, uh, but I want to give a, an overview of obviously starting off in this dispensation and then giving an a overview right. uh, so that people can learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, so, yeah, I will do that because I want to kind of advertise it uh, so that people locally could get a chance to come. Because I know I talk to a lot of people that go to a lot of different churches, and they're like, man, I just, I don't really know where to start. I don't really get, you know, and so I, I think I want to do that. And so I will be doing that, but I want to kind of advertise it so that way the people that I have come in, come in contact with, uh, I don't remember all of them. So <laughs> if it's in yeah. the paper here locally, hopefully they read it, and then they'll come that way and so but yeah thank you for that reminder I do want to do that because again there are a lot of people that are looking for truth they just don't get it you know at their at the church that they're at and so maybe hopefully opening up this invitation uh, we can have people to come out and, and to, to, to really get to the basics whether they come to church here or not it'll be obviously beneficial for their learning and advancement in truth and understanding truth if they continue to come but even if they just get the basics, okay, that will help them in their studying, all right? And so, so that's really what I want to do is get people moving on the right track, okay? And so, uh, yeah, thank you for that, Dennis. I will be doing that here um, probably because probably, I'll probably do it on a Saturday, I guess, which is convenient for everybody. Uh, but then again, you got the mm -hmm. sp sports coming up for children and uh, once school starts back, you got this Saturday sports all day. Um, yeah, I'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> I'll figure it out as to when. But I think the Saturday will be the only day that would, you know, be beneficial to everybody. Or even maybe a Sunday uh, after church, maybe at three o'clock or something on a Sunday might be beneficial too. Uh, but either way, we'll, uh, I'll get it down and get get that going as far as that class is concerned. So I appreciate that reminder. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, okay? 1 Corinthians 9. And again, I just want to thank you all for your patience uh, and all that we're trying to do. And so but I want to make sure I'm able to, to, to cover everything, the questions, your concerns. I want to make sure I cover that all. Uh, and so again, I thank you for your patience. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, okay? Uh, continuing our verse by verse study through the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, and the Corinthians, as we see, were, were carnal in their thinking. They were puffed up. Uh, they were just like how most religious folks that we see today are, uh, not having the, the knowledge of the right doctrine. And so their behavior was dwindling, okay? And so Paul, rather than come in and try to strong arm them, okay, he just came in giving them the doctrine so that the doctrine may point out their error, okay? And again, a lot of times we get in the way of that because we want people to be changed, all right? We want people to behave the right way, and so we beat them up with an iron fist, all right, in hopes that they would straighten up, okay? Which the right thing to do is change the mentality because even, even if you beat somebody up to try to uh, throw, the Bible, uh, throw something down their throat, unless the mind is changed, they won't get it anyway. Okay, and so understand when it comes to this issue, uh, our job is not to uh, uh, strong arm anybody, but just give them the doctrine, and God, God will do His job in the fact that He would give them repentance to the granting to know to the acknowledging of the truth. Okay, look at First Corinthians chapter nine, and we left off right at verse seventeen. Yeah, right, verse sixteen and seventeen. We'll just have a quick word of prayer. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your grace. Uh, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for salvation and the present possession. Father God, we thank you for another day. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity set forth before us that we may speak forth the mystery of the gospel. Uh, we thank you now for your spirit which make it intercessions with groanings that cannot be uttered uh, because we don't know what we ought to pray for as we should. 
Uh, so we thank you for that. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Uh, Father God, if you don't do anything else for us, you've done more than enough. And we thank you for that now. Uh, we ask now that you give us uh, spiritual insight and understanding of your word as the Holy Ghost teaches by comparing spiritual to spiritual. Uh, help us to uh, deny self that you may increase. Uh, Father God, we ask now that we uh, study your word line upon line, precept upon precept, that we may get the understanding that we ought to get uh, so that we can live peaceably upon all men and that we can go out to share the gospel to others. Uh, that they may be able to teach others also. Uh, so in Jesus' name we do pray. We ask now that you touch those who are uh, dealing with bereavements, uh, touch those who are dealing with ailments in the body, touch those who are just dealing with issues, uh, the job, with friends, family, etc. Uh, we ask now that you strengthen and comfort, uh, even in the midst of their of their storm. And we ask these blessings in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so uh, 1 Corinthians 9, all right, uh, look at verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. So Paul is saying, listen, there's nothing to glory of if I preach the for, for because I'm preaching the gospel, because then he says, for necessity is laid upon me. And we said necessity was what? Why? Huh? You mean you have to. Right, right. The, the necessity, okay? obligation was laid upon him okay yea woe is unto me if i preach what if i preach not the gospel okay so so paul was saying that there's no glory in myself for preaching this gospel okay all right uh, i'm not charging you to preach this gospel okay i'm robbing other churches to preach to you so there's no particular glory in it for me all right but he just wants fruit abounding to their account so that they themselves may do uh, may do something, okay? And we'll get to it as we get to the end of this chapter. But Paul is only saying things to them to strengthen them, okay? Look at this. First Corinthians 9, look at verse 17. For further explanation now, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a what? Reward. A reward, okay? So he's saying, excuse me, if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. All right, now. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto who? Me. Unto me. Okay, so now, Paul did not choose his ministry now. There was a necessity placed upon him. All right? Now, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 8, uh, chapter 2. 2 Timothy 2, verse 8. Go to 2 Timothy 2, verse 8. 2 Timothy 2, verse 8. We have it? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, look what Paul says here. He says, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to what? Mm -hmm. According to my gospel. Okay? So he can say this, all right? Simply because he was given a gospel that was committed to his trust and it was necessity was laid upon him that he preached this gospel. So there is no reward for him because necessity was laid upon him. Okay, so understand Paul did not choose the ministry. God chose him. All right, go to Acts chapter 9. Go to Acts chapter 9. And now God has called all of us who are saved, all right, because all of us have a ministry. There's no special ministry now today like there was with Paul because Paul was an apostle because he started something new, all right? Nobody's starting anything new today. So we all have the same purpose and goal, all right, all right according to God, which is to make all men see what is the fellowship of this mystery, to preach the truth of the gospel. So we all have the same commission today, all right? And so understand, Paul had a, a, a necessity, his ministry was necessitated upon him, all right, and a dispensation of the gospel was committed unto him. Look at Acts 9, look at verse 15. Acts 9, verse 15. Acts 9, 15, we have it. Yeah, yes. Amen. Okay. So, but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a what? Prophet. 
A chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the what? For further explanation, for I will show him how great things he must what? Suffer. Suffer for my name's sake. Why is it that people are preaching today that God is going to make you rich? God is going to do all this. He's going to make you in perfect health. You're always going to be feeling great. No, no, no. For Christ now, for those of us, Paul said in 2 Timothy 3.12, for those of us who live godly in Christ Jesus, what? Shall suffer persecution. Right? This life, and to live this same life for Christ, all right, is not based upon how much wealth you, you garner in this life. Okay? Because understand now, there's going to be some suffering now. So if people are are equating the tangible wealth and all these things to God's blessings, not realizing that the things of God are spiritual, then that should be the total opposite. If people are saying that what they have is a result of what God is doing, we should look at that as the total opposite. Because there is suffering involved in Christ's name. All right? Not to say that you can't have a lot of money. If you go get a, the right job, you can make a lot of money. But to, to associate the tangible things with God that's not what the Bible tells us, okay? Because Paul had a ministry that, was, that, was, that God entrusted him with. It was a necessity laid upon him to preach it. So there's no reward in that in a natural sense, but there will be a reward in the spiritual, and that's what Paul is talking about, all right? Go back to, um, go back to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 9. As a matter of fact, go to Acts 22. Go to Acts 22 while we're, while we're in Acts. Let's go ahead and read this. Look at Acts 22, verse 12. Acts 22, verse 12. We have it. Amen. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just, see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. Now, the same God has chosen us, the beloved, those of us who are in Christ, to know his will. But unfortunately, there's so many people who claim to name and know the name of Christ that do not know his will. But yet it can be given to us only by what? His spirit. See that? Look at this, verse 15. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast what? Seen and heard. All right? Go to Acts 26. Acts 26, look at verse 16. Acts 26, 16. We have it? Amen. All right, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Okay, there's a purpose. All right? All of these books and that people say a purpose-driven life and all these things that people say you have a purpose in life. God's purpose for your life is to go help others. God's purpose in your life is to go spread the gospel, okay? Amen. All right, now along the way, you will be helping others eternally, but you can also, if you so choose to do, help them temporarily as well. All right, but your focus is to give them the gospel. That is your purpose, okay? All right? Because God's will is that all men be saved and come into the knowledge of truth. Yes. All right? Just to make somebody feel good temporarily is not doing your purpose. All right? Look at this. 
to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast what? Seen and of those things in the which I will what? Appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified, excuse me, by faith that is in who? Me. That is in me. Mm -hmm. See that? We're granted this faith and this inheritance, okay, according, all right, to Christ's faithfulness. All right? Go to uh, Acts 20 real quick. Go back to Acts 20 real quick. Look at verse 32. Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Now, the word of his grace is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are what? Sanctified. See, that? that's the word of his grace is able to do that. Not anything else, okay? But the word of his grace is able to build you up. All right, so it's the word that increases faith, all right, which changes minds, okay, which transforms lives, okay? It's the word that does that, the word of his grace, all right? Look at this. Go back to 1 Corinthians 9. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. All right, we have it. Verse 17, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. A dispensation is just a set of instructions which God administers for the obedience of man. All right? So for the obedience of man, all right, God administers a dispensation. This particular dispensation of grace, which is according to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Okay? It was entrusted unto Paul. A necessity was laid upon him to preach it. An obligation was laid upon him to preach it. Okay? Now, we're not obligated or necessitated to do anything today. However, our purpose is to preach the gospel, okay? It is to tell people about eternal salvation, all right? By the same things that we have seen with the word and heard according to the word, just as Paul was, all right? Look, uh -huh. Quick question. Yeah. What's the difference between the apostles, or the disciples, whatever you want to call them, the 12, uh -huh. And Paul, were they supposed to go like uh, what we're saying here? Paul is going to the world, mm -hmm. essentially. But the only thing I heard about the apostles was the Great Commission or something like that. Well, well, no, you didn't even hear that. You heard that from man, okay? Because that they don't. The Bible doesn't speak about a Great Commission. Now, what you're talking about, where they would go out to all the world, baptizing them, and then now, if you want to use the term Great Commission, there's a greater commission today in this dispensation. Okay, uh, the greater commission today, and these aren't Bible terms, but because people know these uh, uh, Bible accounts by those words. Okay, so when he was talking about the the Great Commission. To Matthew 28, where he says, Go into all the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and I'll be with you forever, world on end. So now, that has to do with when the Israel will be reigning here on earth. Then that's when they will go out to all the nations. But right now, Israel, the Jews, are on the same playing field as Gentiles. There's no special uh, uh, people of God today other than members of the body of Christ. Okay, so now the difference in, in, in regards to that is there's a greater commission today, commissioned through the Apostle Paul, which is to make all men see what is the fellowship of this mystery, Ephesians 3, 9. Okay, so now there's a greater commission if we want to use those terms. 
There's no longer a commission to tell people about uh, uh, if you won't forgive your father, if you won't forgive somebody else, then your father won't forgive you. There's a greater commission to that. Now we forgive because we've already been forgiven. The motivation is different. The doctrine is different. Same spirit, different administrations, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12. Well, that there's that real huh? Would that be Acts 1-8? Yeah, when, he, when Jesus is telling them to uh, go only unto this place first, yeah, uh-huh. But there, and that power of the Holy Ghost be come upon you to go to the other, uh, Jerusalem. to the, uh, the Israel, God, Jerusalem, Samaria. Samaria, then all the out of uttermost parts of the world, yeah. uh-huh, yeah. But there's real return during the tribulation or after the tribulation with that? Yeah, the, the Great Commission, again, Matthew 28, is on hold right now. That won't happen until out here, until Israel receives their promise, okay? The promise of land and a king. All right, they will the new covenant. Okay, the law will be written on their hearts. They will receive their new covenant. Then they will go out into all the world. Because how can they go out into all the world to bless them where there's no channel of blessing within them, them being Israel? Because at the time they rejected their Messiah. So if they have nothing to give out, there's nothing to give out. Now, what we give out today, whether Jew or Gentile, is the truth of the gospel which is the, that God's grace is what saves us, not according to any, outside of any covenant, any promises or anything like that, all right? That's the truth today. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so 1 Corinthians 9, verse 17, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is what? Committed unto, unto me. Okay, Paul had a dispensation of this gospel committed unto his trust. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter number 1. 1 Timothy chapter number 1, verse 13. Uh, let's start at verse 12. Uh, let's start at verse 11. <laughs> look at 1 Timothy 1 and look at verse 11. Now, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was what? Committed. Committed to my trust, okay? So when Paul talks about the first Corinthians 9, all right, that there was necessity laid upon him. Woe is it to him if he does not preach the gospel, okay? Amen. All right, this glorious gospel was committed to Paul's trust. Verse 12, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, but that he counted me what? Faithful. Faithful putting me into the what? Ministry. Ministry. Okay, that's what it's all about. Remember now, Paul says, stay with me there, go to 1 Corinthians 4. Let's keep 1 Timothy 1, but I'm going to make this point here, and then I'm going to jump right back. Go to 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1. 1 Corinthians 4, look at verse 1. We have it? Mm -hmm. All right. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the what? Mysteries, mysteries of God. God. Stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. 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 Okay? We ought to be found faithful. All right? And as we get to the end of 1 Corinthians 9, Paul is going to talk about this reward. All right? Although there's no reward or glory in himself because this, was, this thing was committed unto him. All right? But there is a reward, and we ought to be found what? Faithful. All right? Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1. So Paul says in 1 Timothy 1 verse 12 that he was thankful to Jesus Christ our Lord who had enabled him for that he found him found Paul faithful putting me into the ministry who was before a what? Blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious but I obtained what? Mercy. Alright? Because I did it ignorantly and what? Unbelief. See a lot of people are doing things ignorantly they just don't want to admit that. Okay, all right, because again, as Paul uh, uh, says in uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 2, that they have a zeal of God, 
but not according to what? Knowledge. Most people love God. They love the Bible. Uh, they say those things, and they have a zeal for God. Oh, let's go win souls for Christ. All right, but they have no what? Knowledge of what God is doing. All right, so it really is just a waste of time. And we understand that we ought to be what? Redeeming the time for the days of what? Evil. Okay? All right, so uh, understand now there are people that are wasting time because they're just simply what? Ignorant. They just don't know. All right? And so that's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, what I did when I was persecuting people, throwing them away uh, into jail and into prison and all those things, I thought I was doing that for God. But I did it ignorantly and what? Unbelief. Unbelief. See that? Look at this. Look at verse 14. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and what? Love, Love which is in who? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. That's the breastplate of righteousness that Paul talks about in Ephesians uh, 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 6 and then in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8, he tells you what that breastplate of righteousness is. Faith in Christ and love to all his saints. That's what Paul says here. All right? The grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. All right? This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am what? Chief. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me what? First. First, First means what? First. The, beginning. the beginning. The number one. The, uh, the leader. Okay? All right? If you're not first, you're last, all right? Uh, uh, Ricky Bobby, all right? Uh, if anybody ever seen Talladega Nights, all right? One of my favorite movies. All right, so now, when it comes to being first, all right, everybody wants to be first. Now, Paul isn't going to get to it in 1 Corinthians 9. He's going to talk about running a race, okay? And when you run a race now, you're not running the race just to say, oh, this let me place by third. No, you're running so that you can place what? First. first. So Paul here, okay, it says that in Paul first, Christ Jesus uh, uh, might show forth all longsuffering for a pattern. What is a pattern? Wait. A road map. A template, okay, a road map. So Paul was first, which means he was at the front. So everybody after him, Paul now becomes a pattern or a template or a road map to something, which was to pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life what? Everlasting. So if you want life everlasting, if you want to be uh, uh, granted among the, those, uh, inherited among those who are sanctified, you have to understand the word of his grace, which is Paul's my gospel. All right? We can go back to 1 um, Corinthians 9. Saying kind of ties into what Paul said. He's a wide master builder. Right, right. He said he had laid the foundation as he was concerned to the grace. Right. To show that, you know, the pattern of him laying that blueprint. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and, and that's exactly why it comes to understand, and we're going to get into 1 Corinthians 3 in just a second, where Paul talks about reward, okay? Also Romans 2.16. Right, right, where Paul says, in, in the day where men should be judged, okay, according to my gospel, okay? The secrets of men shall be judged according to my gospel, right? Romans 2.16, all right? So, so, so understand, when it comes to these issues, okay, of what we ought to be striving for, this is it, okay? This is the goal, okay? Look at 1 Corinthians 9, look at verse 18. All right, look at verse 17. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a what? Reward. Reward. But if against my will, which is the case, because isn't it against his own will? Yes. All right, he just told us that, listen, now a necessity was laid upon him. We just went to the verse that showed God entrusted him and committed something to his trust. Okay? All right? Paul was doing with his own thing, ignorant, ignorantly in unbelief. Okay? And which is normally how we come to hear the gospel and be, be saved. We were normally doing whatever it is we wanted to do. And then somebody came to us, presented the gospel, and we trusted and believed it. Okay? Yeah. Look at verse 18. Now, for what is my what? 
Reward them. Reward them. Because surely I'm looking for a reward if I'm doing something of service. All right? That's just naturally speaking. Most people are. Okay? If you do something for somebody, you expect to receive something in return for your service, for your time. Okay? All right? So understand what Paul is saying here now. What is my reward then? Because if I do it willingly, then I have a what? Reward. But if I do it unwillingly, which he is doing it unwillingly because it was committed unto him, then what is my reward now? All right? Look what he's saying. Verily, which is truly, that when I preach the gospel, uh -huh. it might be easy to understand which he was, which um, he was, while he was doing the opposite. Which means? Was, okay, right. while he was doing the opposite, he was on the way, way to Damascus. Right, right, right. He was the opposite. Yeah. And then it was committed. Right, right, right. So now, like he said, Originally now, he was on his way to persecuting these people who were called of the way, followers of Christ at that time. He was throwing them in jail. He was persecuting and killing them and all those he called. It says he wrecked havoc. Which was his will. Which was his will, okay? Uh, because he was doing, but again, his will, ignorantly, okay, because he had zeal, but not what? Not reach. You see that? And so he was doing that, which is what most people are doing. Going and getting people to come to church just to get them to hear wrong doctrine. Okay, they have a zeal. You want people to end the church, but then when they get there, what are they hearing? Wrong doctrines. Wrong doctrines. All right, that does not sustain them to go out into the world and live a separated or sanctified life. Okay, all right, good point. Look at this, verse 18, 1 Corinthians 9. Barely that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without what? Charge. That I abuse not my power in the what? Gospel. Now this is a, this is a TNT bomb that some of these prosperity preachers have. Yes. You see that? Because Paul's reward, he's saying, is not is that I'm not chargeable to you. Mm -hmm. Now some of these preachers, now they I guarantee you they read this passage and skip right over these verses. Mm -hmm. And the funny part about it is, I remember I had a preacher, uh, I heard a preacher preaching, uh, and it was on uh, Ephesians three. And when Paul talks about the mystery and all those things, the unsearchable riches of Christ, he just literally skipped right over these verses and then just continued reading. And I couldn't believe that Pastor Elphage, we were together, and I couldn't believe my ears. And I was thinking that because we were just sitting there, you know, tapping each other, like, ooh, we're about to get to this verse. You know, we're about to get to this verse, because he was going verse by verse. And then when he got to verse 8 in Ephesians 3, he just skipped right over it. And we were looking like, did he just... Did he not hear it? You know, he just literally skipped right over it, which is what people do when they cannot explain something. So understand, Paul is saying, what is my reward? Because I'm not doing this willingly. I'm doing it against my will. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then there should be a reward to me. And my reward is, Paul is saying here, that truly that when I preach the gospel, that I may make the gospel of Christ without what? Charge. This is free now. Eternal life is not bought or paid for. It's free, okay? Whenever somebody puts a price tag on the gospel, that is man's will. That it goes against God's will, all right? Because some people won't come to your church to preach, all right? Sometimes there's just time co conflicts. I just can't make it at that time, okay? Uh, but other people are saying, you're not paying me enough money to come there. Because you got to pay me, then you got to pay my entourage because the Holy Ghost flows with, with all of us. You know, that's, a, that's what they say. So now you got to pay all of these people for the free gospel to be preached. Then when they get there, they don't give you the right gospel. They don't give you a bunch of entertainment. All right? And fleshly emotion. Which again, that's what people pay for. Because when you go to a concert now, I know some of y'all are so holy, you don't really go to those things. But when you go to a concert now, all right, all right, you want to go to little Frankie Beverly and Mays, all right, you want to get your little two-step on, you're going to pay because why? You're paying for them to do what? Entertain you. So the same thing happens when you get to the gospel, all right, and you're paying these preachers to come preach. You're paying for them to entertain you. That's what people want to see. That's why when they go to hoot and holler and the organ and go and everybody jumping across off the ceiling and off the lights, Jeez. that's what you pay to see. A clown show, okay? Mm -hmm. You're paying to go see the circus. So that's what you're going, that's what you pay your money for. If it's just, if I'm just teaching like this and just teaching truth, you're really paying to see that. I'm not entertaining you. You see that? 
So Paul is saying, listen now, my reward, I'm not chargeable to you. All right, look at verse 19, 1 Corinthians 9. For though I be what? Free, Free from all men. men. Further explanation here, okay? He gave us a rundown here, starting from verse 15, how he's used none of these things that it should be done unto him. He should not make my, not, uh, not make my glory void, saying how, listen, I, there was a, a gospel that was committed unto me. It was against my will. What's my reward? If I did it voluntarily, then I know I would receive a reward. But now that I'm doing it involuntarily, what's my reward? That I'm not chargeable to you. You see that? That I'm not chargeable to you. Look at verse 19. Four, further explanation. For though I be what? Free from all who? Men. Yet have I made myself what? Servant unto all. Unto all that I might what? Gain the more. Gain the more. Amen. When you get to 1 Corinthians 9, Paul is talking about how to win souls. It's not in glory in yourself, okay? It's not in overcharging people for the free gospel, okay? But it's, it's by making yourself servant unto all, even though you be free, that you might gain the more. What does this sound like? What does this verse remind you of? In verse 19. What passage of scripture or what, he, what accord of them? What, you, what, what do you think about when he says, but though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more? Christ. Huh? Christ, when he did the first thing. Huh? Susan. Yeah, what you got, Susan? I don't know where it is, but he made himself a servant. Yeah. Right. Go to Philippians 2. I'm going to help you out. Philippians 2. All right. The Lord of the angels, right? Huh? Yeah. The first part, Lord of the angels. Yeah. No, that's in Hebrews. We can go to that one too. That's in Hebrews. All right. But the, the one she said is in, go to Philippians 2. Uh, Philippians 2. Serving unto me. Right. This is the same mind of Christ that Paul is saying. Because listen, I'm free now. Paul says, listen, for me to die is actually gain. But for me to stay is beneficial to you. <coughs> Because to be, Paul says, we're confident that to be absent from the body is to be what? Yes. Present with the Lord. So it's a benefit for me if I leave. But it's more profitable to you if I what? Stay. You see that? So listen to what he's saying now. He, was, he had the same mindset. He, I'm free from all. Okay? But I made myself this servant. Even though it was against my will, it was committed unto my trust, a necessity was laid upon me, now... I'm going to take that necessity, and I'm going to do God's will. All right? Look at this. Philippians 2, look at verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in who? Christ Jesus. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of what? No reputation. And took upon him the form of a what? Servant. And was made in the likeness of who? Men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the what? Death of the cross. Even the death of the cross. Right? Even the death of the cross. So just as Paul says, for though I'm free from all, I made myself a what? Servant. Christ, although he was free, he's God. He's not constricted by time or sin or anything else. He was free. He's God. He made himself a servant to die a death, even a death of shame and rejection. Why? So that he could what? Gain the more. You see that? So that he could gain you and I. That's why he did it. He made himself of no reputation to do that. In order for us to have the same mind of Christ, all right, and win souls for the body, Okay, we have to be the same way. Don't worry about who you think you are when people go to telling you off and, th and all of that. Just give them the gospel. Because, listen, you become a servant unto them, although you're free from any of that mess. You become a servant unto them that you may gain them. That's the whole goal and focus of the ministry, that you may gain them. Not that you may prove that I'm right, you're wrong. All right? Not that I may prove that how much I know. All right? Not that I may prove how much you don't know, but it's not about what? Me. It's about Christ. 
You see that? So, so we do these things, all right, and become servants and teach the truth of the gospel so that men can be what? Saved. Because that is God's what? Will. You see that? That is the whole focus and his will, okay? All right, Paul wanted to gain the more because he wanted to become more like Christ. Okay? Go back to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. Paul was more concerned about gaining Christ, not himself. He was concerned about not glorying in himself, but in Christ. He says, Let, uh, 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 let's actually glory in anything save for the cross of Christ. Okay, in, in Galatians. All right, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, look at verse 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a what? A Jew. Why? That I might gain the Jews mm -hmm. to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are what? Under the law. Under the law. Why was he doing this? So that he could gain the more. Mm -hmm. Paul was keeping vows. Jewish vows and all these things. Having people, people always say, well, in Acts, Paul baptized. Paul even had somebody circumcised in Acts. But if you want to know what Paul is saying and what Paul is doing, you have to go to Paul's epistles. All right? So, but what about if Paul says circumcision promised you nothing today, why would Paul have somebody circumcised? Now, who did he have circumcised? That was somebody specific. He had one person circumcised, but then he had another person not circumcised. Huh? What you got? What you got? Huh? Trivia question. Timothy <laughs> Okay, so who was what? You might be over something. Stephanus. Timothy was. Huh? Stephanus. Oh, that was Stephanus. Uh huh. You said Timothy what? Timothy are born, but Timothy wasn't because Timothy wasn't a Jew in a sense. All right, you, you, you're on the right track. All right, think like this. Who did he take with him Barnabas. that was a Jew? Barnabas. Barnabas. And who did he take with him that was a Greek? Timothy was a Greek. Uh, Barnabas was, was Timothy a Greek? Uh, no, hold it, hold it. Let me make sure. No, that's a lie. Mm -mm. His dad uh, was a Greek and his talking. mom was a... Uh, Who is that? That's, um... Yeah, y'all, I mean, y'all right there. Y'all right there. <laughs> Go to Acts 16. Timothy was and a And Eunice was his grandmother and right. Lois is his Who mother. Is that? That's... That's Timothy. That is Timothy. That's Timothy, okay. Right. So was Timothy circumcised or did he not have him circumcised? He wasn't circumcised. He wasn't? Jewish. No. Huh? But his dad was Yeah, who was that? His what? His father. Right, so would he have been constrained to be circumcised or not? No. <laughs> he wouldn't have been. <laughs> Go to Acts 16. Go to Acts 16. Let's look at this. I know we did one and one the other one did All in the Oh, yeah. Look at Acts 16, verse 1. We got it? All right. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus. Who was that? Timothy. Okay. The son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a what? Greek. Which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Okay. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took him and circumcised him now. Why? Because of the Jews which were in those what? Water. For they knew all that his father was a what? Greek. So now, because there were Jews there, Paul became as a Jew that he might what? Gain the more. 
You see that? Jesus. See, so, so understand, Paul says, though I'm free from all men, Paul wants fruit abounded to people's account. So listen, circumcision, Paul understands that that ain't going to profit you one bit. But because these Jews knew that his father was a Greek, and whatever your father is, that's what it makes you. So because they knew this, Paul says, you know what? Let's go ahead and circumcise him so that he may continue with me, all right, so the brother won't feel some type of way. And he did it, and he was able to continue there and teach the gospel there while Timothy was still there. So when people run to the book of Acts, you got to get the context as to why Paul did it. That's why it specifically says, because of the Jews that were in those quarters. Because if there were no Jews there, Paul would not have circumcised him. Because he knew it means nothing. But for a people that require a sign, 1 Corinthians 1.22, for the Jews require a sign, then Paul had to give Timothy the sign of circumcision. Mm. That he might what? Gain the more. So does that make Timothy a proselyte? No. 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 Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yep. it wasn't done at birth, was it? Right. It wasn't done at birth. All right. Look at this. Go back now. Who was the person that... Paul says, no, he's not getting circumcised. Barnabas? No, Barnabas is not the right answer. <laughs> Go to Galatians 2. It was a Greek, though. It was a Greek, but who was it? Who? Give us a, 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 a it, it was it, it was one of the people that Paul traveled with who has a book. Yeah, Timothy. Titus. No, Timothy. Timothy, yeah. Timothy yeah. just we just saw Timothy got circumcised. Who was it? Titus. Titus. That sounds about right. I don't know, but let me see. I don't know. <laughs> go, to, go to Galatians two. Go to Galatians two. He traveled with somebody else. But he doesn't have a book. It's the one that has a book. All right, look at Galatians 2. Look at verse 2. Uh, verse 1. Then Paul, then 14 years after I went up again to, Jeru to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took what? Titus. Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run where? In vain. Remember, Paul is not running in vain to say, let me just come in third and fourth, but he's running to do what? Win the race. To become what? First. All right, look at verse three. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be what? And that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into what? Bondage. That's what people do. Circumcision didn't benefit Timothy and wasn't going to benefit Titus. But Paul did it with Timothy because of the Jews. He didn't do it with Titus because it didn't mean anything. All right? And so now that's what people do. Oh, so you don't keep the Sabbath? Oh, you don't go to church on the Sabbath? You don't eat this? You eat that? You eat... Listen, they're only doing that to bring you into what? Bondage. They want to spy out your liberty, which we have in Christ, to eat freely, to not observe one day above another, okay? Let no man judge you, therefore, that any meat, drink, any holy day. For those things were a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Colossians 2, 16, 17, all right? So now, all right, people do that to bring you into bondage. You're in bondage to those things, not I, because I'm in who? Christ, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Liberty. You see that? Go to first, go back to first Corinthians 9. Quick question. Yeah. Titus. Who was the servant huh? they were talking about? Where? In Titus. In the book of Titus? Yeah, who was the servant? I can't remember. What? what uh, Wasn't you, it a servant who escaped and he was supposed to go back to his... Uh, uh, was he was having a slave. That's the last book of the... Uh, Paul's last book. And Philemon, you mean? Yeah, who was, he, who was the servant? I don't know. you just coming out of nowhere. So you talking about Titus or you talking about Philemon? What are you talking about? There was a, 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 a servant who had moved a slave. He was a slave. That's in Philemon, though. That's what he was. I, I don't really know what you're trying to explain or ask. I so I'm not sure. Was, it I sounds like the slave that was... um. 
they had to, to teach him about being a brother or something like that. I can't. Remember. Now that would be Philemon, because that's what Philemon. But what's the yeah. name of the slave? Is I think what he. Was that's doing. what I'm trying. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I and, and he wasn't a slave. Uh, he would have been because the Bible doesn't talk about slaves. He would have been more of a servant. Servant. Okay. All right. So so. So it, it would have been uh, Philemon though. Because that's what Paul talks about in the book of Philemon. Yeah, that's Philemon. Onesimus? Yeah, that's, that's the name. Onesimus? Onesimus? Okay. Okay, so what was your point about him? I just want to know who it was. Oh, oh. Okay. All right, 1 Corinthians 9. Let's go ahead. He was back in Titus already, so it wouldn't have been that hard to flip over. I couldn't remember names. Like right, that. right. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians 9. Bang. All right, look at verse 20, 1 Corinthians 9. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are what? Under the law. Under the law. As a matter of fact, let's end with this. Go to Acts before we keep reading. Let's go to Acts and we'll close out the first session with this. Because as late as Acts 20, go to Acts 21, Paul was still taking the Nazarite vow with the Jews. Acts 21. Look at this. Acts 21. Uh, this is Paul going to, uh, 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 to the Jews, and they were talking about his ministry among the Gentiles. But look at verse 23. Acts 21, verse 23. Do therefore this that we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them. This is the Nazarene vow, okay? All right, the Nazarite vow, which is uh, back in the uh, book of Deuteronomy that they had to do, all right? This Nazarene vow, all right? Look at this. Then take and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing but that thou thyself also walkest what? Orderly, Orderly and do what? Keep the, the law. That's the whole point here now that he wanted them to know. He wanted them to keep this law, okay, in front of these Jews. Because they knew Paul was teaching the Gentiles one thing, but he didn't, they didn't want him to teach the Jews that they didn't have to do these things. Okay? Look at verse 25. As touching the what? Gentiles. As touching the Gentiles now, watch this, which believe we have written and what? Concluded, Concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangle and from what? Then Paul took the men and the next day purifying himself with them entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for what? Everyone. For every one of them. Okay, the book of it's Numbers, not Deuteronomy. The book of Numbers, it talks about this Nazarene vow, chapter 6. Uh, but, but so what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 9, okay, when he said... This issue uh, uh, in verse uh, uh, 19, uh, verse 20, and unto the Jews became a, as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law. Because to keep that Nazarite vow was a commandment under the what? Law. So Paul did that. All right? Why? That I might gain them that are what? Under the law. That's why he did it. All right, and we'll get to it. We'll pick this up. Look at verse 21. To them that are without law as without law. All right, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. So when Paul says he became without law, what is he talking about? Did he just break rules? He says, to them that are without law, I became as without law, so that I may gain, gain them without law. So he was just breaking rules just like they were? Huh? Okay, so so was he just per, just purposely breaking laws because they were so that he could gain them? 
Which love? No, no, I think what he said in Romans, he said, uh, when, when he said, uh, God forbid, but he was saying something about now we have the power to establish the law. Okay. So basically, he's not breaking the law. I think that was the whole point when he said, God forbid, and when he was talking about the power of grace and giving the whole rundown of history. So they were like, well, we just go out and, I guess, make more of the law. He was like, no, we established the law. Right. So that's said without the law, I'm thinking you're talking about as far as the condemnation, as far as his pointing towards mm -hmm. us. The Gentiles were never given the law. But they was never under right. the law. Yes, yeah, so it's not a question of who he, he was talking to. He was enforcing it. It's not a question of who he's talking to. The question is, because obviously those without law would be Gentiles. The question is, that I'm asking, is did he become without law? Because he said he did. What does him becoming without law mean? Did he just he break did, laws because they broke the law? He didn't follow the Jewish customs. Okay, okay. Because the simple fact. He took off the Sabbath day. He never used that word Sabbath in that either. So that would have been. But Paul hard. kept the Sabbath in the book of Acts. Early. Yeah. The way he was talking to the Jews. Okay. Yes, only when well, he I was. I think, too, in his order, he talked about the law and then the last piece he did down without the law. But remember, he went to the Jews first. Uh -huh. So now, then the Gentiles, so I'm thinking in this order in verse 9, uh -huh. he speaks about like that journey from like uh, from a numerical standpoint. Right, and, and I'm not asking that. But look, but what I'm mean. asking is, when he says he was without law, so that he could gain those without law, what is that? Because the people, the Gentiles that were without law, all right, we're doing things and breaking the things contained in the law. So was Paul just purposely breaking the law so that he may gain those under the law? That's what I'm asking. Okay. Well, the yeah, things that he did, did, did some uh, things did break the law. Some things did because he ate meat. He ate with the Gentiles. That would have okay. been a breaking so, the law yeah. right off the bat. He, 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 he moved according to where he was to gain the more. Like we discussed That's what time. I'm saying. So, so he, he was, had he to. He did a certain thing when he was with the other group. He did so when he thing. did those certain things, he just purposely broke the law that he might gain. No, was just like what Paul said, he didn't eat meat in certain areas because so that would have at first. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll, pick, we'll pick it up. When but we then get he back. became he the master the law, so he could. Huh? He said under the law. Of All right. That's a parenthetical statement. All right. That's part of the answer. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're gonna uh, yeah. we're gonna uh, we'll pick it up right when we get back. We'll break for those who are We'll uh, break for about ten minutes. Uh, uh, and then we'll pick right back up. All right. So let us pray. Father, God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for this time and this hour that we may come together to redeem the time uh, that we are uh, studying to show ourselves approved unto you, uh, workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth, uh, that we may not be in error, and that we may know you uh, according to your word. And so in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.